right, buffalo, and I'm particularly wanting to start with that picture because it's it's quite telling, isn't it? Well, it is. It's you. It's me, uh, up what? a tree, <laughs> getting the hell out of the way. Right. What 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 was going wrong there? Well, we were trying to shoot a good bull. Um, a cow, as always the case, it's always the bitch that wanders over and gives you a hard time. And she saw us, and she came to discuss matters with us. And you really, really don't want to shoot something that you don't have a license for. And therefore, you can run away from a buffalo, except that it runs twice your speed. And under the circumstances, uh, the client ended up up one tree, and I ended up up a different one. Now, this is a tree in, in Zimbabwe. And yes. I, and uh, the viewers are going to notice we're beside a frozen lake in, in Sweden. And so you just need to explain why, why are we here? Well. I was a research officer in the Zimbabwe Parks Department. I did a lot of ammunition development for them, for the cartridges we couldn't get. I moved into police forensics and ended up here developing ammunition. For? Norma. Norma, the people who make the bullets? Yes, okay. Norma ammunition. Right, so back to Africa, what happens next? Did you shoot the cow? No, no, we didn't. It was a herd situation. Ideally, you don't want to shoot out of a herd. Now you've got a, a series of photographs coming up which show how it doesn't necessarily all go right. Can you, can you just talk us through those? This is a... So, so, so show them up one by one, I think, yeah. This is a prime example of inexperienced people trying to hunt a buffalo. And you're watching this from across, uh, what well, looks like a dry river bed. A dry river bed, yes. On the hill above them is a, a tourist camp. E. Uh, this was not a situation where they should have been doing what they were doing. It's National Parks personnel. Mm -hmm. There was an old sergeant who used to be one of my men. That's, that's him there, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, wearing the beret and carrying a British SLR, semi-automatic mm -hmm. 308 caliber rifle. Yep. The officers uh, are carrying heavy caliber rifles appropriate for shooting a buffalo. Right. The buffalo has smelt them and is running off. Now, just to get this right, the camp is right there behind Yes. You. Yes, any shoot-throughs are going to bounce through the tourists. Brilliant. <laughs> and the shooting has started. I uh, guess you can see the dust coming up over there. Yes. That looks like a miss. Yes. You can see the toilets from the tourist camp behind. And you can see a certain amount of, um, of cowardice, I think, in the face of the enemy there by the officer class. Uh, yes, I think flee <laughs> springs to mind. That guy, that guy, that guy are running. <laughs> And your oh. sergeant is standing and holding his ground. And pumping rounds from a 308 military ball and just keeping shooting. And that's not a good caliber for a for buffalo, is it? It's not legal. No. It's not suitable. No. But, you know, way to late brings most things down in the end. Yeah. And, but he isn't running. He knows, I mean, he'd been a sergeant when I was a cadet and 30 years later he was still a sergeant. He knows that you cannot outrun a buffalo, and if you run, you will get hit. And they may know that, but they seem to believe they can outrun. Well, fear, it's called the Dickie Bird Syndrome. Mm. One man runs, all run. And it takes an immense amount of discipline to stand when others are running. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it all the time. A tracker who's unsure breaks and runs, you can almost guarantee the client will follow him. And it is a problem. Uh, the old sergeant had fought the communists, he had fought the fascist dissidents, mm -hmm. poachers. Yeah, he wasn't going to be affected by the Dickie Bird syndrome. He wasn't going to run. No. Okay. He is moving to try and keep out of the way. He has crossed from that side of the tree to that side as things have gone yep. at remarkable speed. Yep. But he is still engaging. The officers are still fleeing at full speed. Mm -hmm. And the buffalo is beginning to go down. Uh, the, the buffalo is beginning to go down. The officers are beginning to come back. Yeah, phew. Somebody sorted the problem out. <laughs> and just the repeated weight, 762 NATO, it's, it's damaging things, it's, it's breaking bones. Yeah. And the buffalo is down, and the officers now bravely move to the fore. <laughs> to take possession. We, we've seen this in several world wars, don't, don't worry, we, yes. we, we, we know the situation. That's now, all, all too 
typical unfortunately of under experienced men being let loose with dangerous game. And the last photo in the sequence is another parks officer who should have known about dangerous game but was one of those he thought he was an officer therefore he is automatically an expert and tackled a wounded buffalo and ended up underneath it. Now we have to say, is he, is he actually dead in no, this picture? No, not in this picture. He didn't survive very long. Um, well, he was killed later. He was killed later. Um, he didn't learn terribly well from the experience. Now, can you, what, can you, what can you tell me from what you can see in this photograph about what happened? Um, the buffalo went in to hook him. The buffalo was very badly hit. It had been hit 12 hours before, bullet through both lungs. Is that, that's that big streak of blood, blood on his back? Yeah. yeah okay. And taken two hits from a 375 the night before. Yeah. And charged first thing in the morning. The officer in question fired a grazing shot down its side. That's that red pink line just there. Yeah. yeah. And as it went in to hook him, um, buffaloes use their horns as a as a hook. Mm -hmm. He dived to get out of the way. Yeah. And I hit it twice with a 7.62 NATO, shooting over the head and over his back, and it fell on him. What goes through your mind when you're seeing one of your companions? taking what you might consider to be silly risks in this situation? Bloody fool. It's not a game where you can take silly risks. It's, if you make a mistake, you will pay for it with your life.